It's longer than the Eiffel Tower. It's got an 80,000 horsepower engine and weighs up to 240,000 tons. And yet, thanks to the magic of buoyancy, yet Benjamin Franklin floats. It's leaving China soon, heading for Los Angeles. This is the largest container ship that has ever docked in the U.S. Being on board, you really get a sense of scale, mainly because of how small you feel. But for a transport ship like this one, the most important figure is how much it can hold. The Benjamin Franklin can take on 18,000 containers. Placed end to end, they would stretch 68 miles. It's cheaper to have a bigger ships, you know, you can carry more products, you know, and you have a, uh, less things to, to pay after that. Often on the other side of doors like these are things like electronics, toys, clothes, consumer goods made in China that will sell in American stores. This is what trade between the two countries looks like. And far more stuff is exported from China to the U.S. than the other way around, a difference of hundreds of billions of dollars. That imbalance has been a source of conflict for some time. And in the middle of a U.S. presidential race, it makes for easy fodder. They're killing us. And if you want to do business with China, it's almost impossible. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump suggested slapping a 45 percent tax on Chinese goods to even the playing field. But critics have attacked his idea as bad for business and bad for states. Trump's political future, along with his rivals, relies in a big way on Iowa, where caucuses are set to kick off in this year's presidential election. And it's a state that exports billions of dollars worth of things like crops and machinery to China each year. U.S.-China trade is incredibly intertwined, and the next U.S. president will have some ability to influence those ties, and that will impact people's lives on both sides of the Pacific, which is why we're talking about U.S. politicians in Iowa while we're thousands of miles away on this giant ship in the South China Sea. Matt Rivers, CNN, off the coast of southern China.